Hi, Ronnie Cosse and Crystal Lesker here from Cora Rehabilitation's Riverside location. Today we're filming in Memorial Park right down the street from our clinic. Today we're going to be discussing lumbopelvic stabilization for runners. There's a common thought that if you can stabilize at the core and at the pelvis that you can eliminate a lot of your back injuries and your lower extremity injuries while you're running. Most running is going to take place in a forward motion. Getting the lateral stability is going to prevent a lot of the injuries that we get from overuse and repetitive nature of running. Uh, what we're going to do today is start with their basic core activation and work our way up through the progression to a more functional exercise for runners. So Chris, go ahead and lay down for me on your back, please. The first thing that we want to do, we want to make sure that we're engaging our core at all times. To do this, we want to find some muscles in between the hip bones in the pelvis and you're just going to go just midline, just below the belly button. And here I'm going to ask Chris to bring his belly button down. So go ahead and bring. Good. And what I should see is a minimal activation here in the lower core. I shouldn't see too much uh, use of the upper abdomen and I shouldn't see him holding his breath or he's compensating with too much of the diaphragm. Uh, we really want to engage that lower core, the transverse abdominis, at all times through all activities, including getting up and down from a chair, getting out of bed when we're walking, and especially when we're running or performing our athletic activities. To progress this activity, we always want to make sure that the core can stay strong with movement. So what I'm going to ask Chris to do is tighten his core, and now he's going to slide this heel out just above the table and slowly back up. This is going to start to progress into that movement pattern that we need with all sports. It's good if you have a good tight core when you're sitting down, but you need to have that tight core all the time, especially with movement. So this is a nice progression of that. Next we're going to progress the lumbopelvic stabilization with movement. So after the heel slide, we're going to go to a hip four-way or a hip six-way series here. Um, again, before all these activities, tighten that core up, that lower core, uh, make sure that you can breathe adequately. First thing we're going to do is a straight leg raise. He's going to straighten his leg out and he's going to lift this up just to the opposite knee. So about 45 degrees and slowly back down. That would be our first one. The second one, he's going to lay over onto his side. He's going to do hip abduction. To here, he's going to bend the bottom leg and the top leg will be tight. Again, tighten the core and he's going to lift up, slowly back down. Three sets of 15, alternate each side. To do hip adduction, he's going to flip this top leg up bottom leg straight and he's going to lift this one. This one's really important and a lot of people avoid this one in the gym but the hip adductors are actually the most active set of muscles when we are sprinting. So any kind of sprinting activity, running, uh, endurance, any of that, it's important to get this adductor group really really strong. Flip over on your stomach now for me. We're going to do a few in this area again. Again he's laying on his stomach but he still wants to keep that core nice and tight. The first thing he'll do are straight leg raises in a straight leg position here. So go ahead and back down. And he can alternate back and forth or just do 15 on each side. We can progress this by bending the knee and getting a little bit more of the glutes involved. Perfect. All right. Now what we're gonna do is progress to more of a bridge. So actually getting some more movement of the, the whole lumbopelvic chain. So go ahead and lay on your back for me. All right, so now he's gonna engage that core. He's gonna lift his pelvis up in the air. He's gonna get a nice bridge here. To progress this again, we're always looking to become more functional when possible. He's going to try to go into a single leg bridge. So he's gonna put his feet a little bit closer into a narrow base. He's gonna go up and just with one leg, perfect. Now to progress this even more, we're gonna add a fair ball in here. Put his feet up, tighten the core, and he's going to lift up. Good. And now we're adding a little bit more of a dynamic surface as he's really having to work a lot more. I encourage you to make sure that you can do the two leg bridge and then the single leg bridge without the TheraBall first prior to progressing to this. That way you minimize the risk for injury. The next group of muscles we're going to work are going to be the hip rotators. So Chris is going to lay on the side. We're going to do two of the most popular exercises, clamshells and reverse clamshells. Now a lot of people don't do these, but it's absolutely vital if you're going to get that hip rotational strength to prevent these lower extremity injuries when you're running. So clamshells is going to work by just staying in this 45 degree bent, uh, I'm sorry, this 90 degree angle here, and then he's going to lift just the knee up. Again, active the, activate the core and then lift the knee up. To do reverse clamshells, we're actually going to lift the opposite way. So knees are going to stay intact and then the ankle is going to come up. Good. 
again about three sets of 15 on each side for both the clamshells and the reverse clamshell is going to be an appropriate dose for you. Once you've mastered some of the more basic core exercises, you feel like you're able to activate while you're walking around, you're really not thinking about it too much, I encourage you to progress to the next two. So we're going to do dead bugs and then alternating arms and legs. Dead bugs, what we're going to do is have Chris lift his arms straight up in the air, and then his knees are going to go up to a 90-90 angle, and now he looks like a dead bug. Uh, what he's going to try to do here is alternate the arms and the legs in this position while maintaining the core. Good. Now Chris is pretty advanced, so Chris can go all the way out. What I encourage you to do to start is actually just go about six inches on either side. If you can go as slow as possible and stay controlled, that's going to be the best foundation for you in order to progress any of these other exercises. Good. In order to do the alternating arms and legs, we're actually just going to flip over and we're going to be on all fours here and we're going to try to do the exact same thing as the dead bugs, but just in a different position. Try to maintain neutral spine, keep that core engaged. We want to make sure that we don't see too much hip rotation here because, we, again, we do want that stability. About three sets of ten will be good here. If you just count to ten total, so five on each side and then take a rest, that's a great starting point. Uh, you can work your way up once you become more endurant with these exercises. Okay, so the final three exercises that we're going to do in this lumbo-pelvic stabilization program are going to be the most functional. Uh, I definitely want you to make sure that you can do all the core exercises on the table and all the hip exercises on the table prior to trying to progress to some of these because these are the more advanced exercises. The first one we're going to do is a medicine ball lunge. Chris is going to do a, a traditional lunge, but he's going to take this medicine ball. He's going to try to reach it out as far as he can, maintaining that core, and then power up into a single leg stance, keeping that ball up as high as you can. This is really, really difficult to maintain that balance, so go as slow as you need to to maintain control. The more control that you have, the easier it gets to start progressing to a little bit quicker speed. Okay. The next one that we're going to do is going to maintain that runner form, but it's going to require him to try to touch his opposite toe and maintain balance. So he's going to go in the runner form, he's going to try to reach down to the opposite toe, and then come back up. Again, keep those arms pumping, engage all the core, uh, and try to go as slow as you can until you get it under control. The next exercise, we're going to progress this runner touch to a runner pull. We've got a TheraBand tied to the bottom here. Chris is going to mimic that same thing, but instead of trying to touch his toe, he's going to pull that band and add some resistance, making it a little bit more difficult for his core. As always, feel free to visit any one of our eight Jacksonville area locations for core rehabilitation, or we'll do a free 15-minute injury screen. We'd be glad to go over any of these exercises and make sure you're doing them right. We look forward to keeping you in the game.